You are watching Sipping Off the Cuff on TequilaAficionado.com or part of Tequila Aficionado Media. I'm Mike Morales in San Antonio, that gentleman over there with the wild hairdo. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Levy in San Diego. Rick uh, is, is um, helping me out, helping us out as we go through a variety pack of Scorpion Mezcal. And, and Rick is just, we fell in love with the Blue Agave previous, if you've watched that with kind of a glitch in between. I'm um, new to Mezcal and Mike is introducing me. And uh, so he first uh, gave me the training wheels Put me on the blue agave mezcal. And it was really beautiful. We loved it. Yeah, we did. It was, it's really different. Um, it it's not as I said to you before, and to our to our watchers out there, our, our viewers, if you're expecting it to taste like a tequila, it's not. It will it will open your eyes though. It will it will rise up to to greet you because it was uh, made a little bit more traditionally. Uh, in in as we discovered in copper copper pot stills, I believe, uh, mm. which is what the information said to us on on the card previously. This one is the Espadín. Now we're going to go a little bit more. This is kind of what we're used to, Rick. The Espadín. Uh, in other words, it's mezcal made from Espadín, which is the the traditional plant that most mezcals are 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 made from. Um, and depending on where they come from and where they're harvested and the hand of the maker and the region, you know, it all comes from Oaxaca and several other parts of, of, um, of that area in, in, in Mexico. But, you know, just Oaxaca alone with the different microclimates and the makers um, it, it, and, and the, the ABV. These are 40 ABV, folks. That's 80 proof. This is probably... As Rick said, a great introductory uh, level of alcohol for those of you who are just experimenting with mezcals. You're 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 coming over from the tequila world, and you kind of want to know what the what what all the fuss is about. Because I was, you know, the mezcals I've had before were very smoky. They were probably very traditional, um, but I was turned off by the smoke. And uh, so far, with the one that we've tried. The smoke isn't as predominant. Yeah. So you know, it was very, it was very, uh, you know, the fruit forward. You know, the plant, mm -hmm. and uh, the nose was just, you know, big and herbal, and uh, and you know, you still got that, you know, kind of peppery feeling on your palate, and it had just this incredibly long finish, um, and you know, just a hint of smoke. The, the thing that we, t we talked about off camera, though, was the mouthfeel. You know, we kind of neglected that because it was, there's so much to talk about, you know, when, when you break these down with the different plants. The, I know for me, I had to actually cleanse my palate in between the, the blue agave and, in, and in, before we, we attacked the espadín because I could still taste it. You know, I did, this, I did that as well, but I am still tasting it. Are you really? Wow. I, you know, even after the, the, you know, mineral water and alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, I, I, I like to use vodka, we use a, a neutral grain spirit to, to, you know, rinse out your mouth, vodka, uh, some water as well, spit it out, you know, and that, that seems to do the trick for me, at least when I do tequilas and that's more of a traditional way of doing it. Um, sometimes you, uh, um, I know that with Alex, we, we like to use like uh, matzah, matzah crackers. So for those of you who, uh, yeah, and I'm not even sure if this is kosher or not. I think, I think these tequila, <laughs> I think these mezcals are, but um, in any case, uh, anything like a dry cracker, a, a non-salted, you know, cracker would, would help to cleanse any, any, anything like that. But it, these are really substantial mezcals and they're, there's no additives. Um, uh, if I know these folks and I do, this is what you see is what you get. And if it's going to coat your palate, it's just doing it naturally from, from the oils of the plant itself and how the method of distillation. Um, these are, from what I can tell on our cards here, we have uh, Douglas French, who is the, the founder, is the master distiller. It's copper pot still. 
And I think so far the first two that we've had have been copper pot. Um, artisanal, so it's steam cooked, is is what it, what the, uh, the the type of distillery is what it says here. Um, so now with mezcals, I've heard about them cooking the agaves in like an earthen pit mm -hmm. with you know. Uh, Previously used agave fibers, you know, thrown right. over the top and maybe rocks or maybe dirt over the top. Um, is at, now when he says steam cooked, you know, how are, are, is that going to be like what we're used to, where it's probably in like a masonry oven with tequila or autoclaves? You know, it's probably not, not an autoclave. I'm, well, that's, you know, th that's, that, again, the description is a little bit misleading because. You know, steam cooked is traditionally an autoclave, I would assume. Now, I'm I'm looking at their website also because we had we had minimal point of sale material and and, and that, that was sent with us. It, it's a long story how I got my samples, but I had to go find the driver, <laughs> the distributor from Houston to go get these. Um, but anyway, the the. Um, I don't even think that they're telling us how exactly these are, you know, these are being processed. Um, you know, I, I don't have anything. Uh, uh, I, I don't have anything, any information that's telling me how they are are are, are being baked or cooked. Um, all I can tell you is the information I have here says artisanal. If that is the case. Then I would I would say that would they're using the that they're using a pit, uh, steam cooked. I'm not sure that what that means. I, you know, there to me those are two different things. But I didn't write this, so you know I'm going to go with artisanal. I'm going to say that this is you know the the traditional way of doing it. Um, but I'm kind of anxious just to taste it. God, you know. And if it has that, you know, if it has that smoky accent, then and they're not using additives, then that would have to be the way that they're, the way yeah. they're baking the agave. I would think so. I would think All so. Right. I'm using my Glencairn, which I really enjoy. This is the a, a, a Canadian whiskey blending glass, and I find that for mezcal, it's beautiful because it, it there's enough, you know, mouth surface and and nose area, and it kind of chimneys up. And if you got a mezcal that it's going to sing to you. I'm oh. going to use my, my hand-blown snifter. There from you go. There's nothing wrong with that. When you're talking about mezcals, really, there is no glassware. You know, we, last, last time I was using a clay copita, um, there were bubbles. Did you notice your bubbles? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I love bubbles. Wow. Oh, wow. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Rick, this is a much better nose. Oh. Wow, wow, wow. Hey, compared for the blue agave has more of a tamer nose. This is a, a much more fruitier forward nose, though. Yeah. This is like another notch up here. This would be more more fruity and maybe flowery instead of the uh, big herbal notes we were getting from the blue agave variety. Yes. Oh my gosh! Wow! Wow! You know what's amazing to me, Rick, is that we're getting this much nose out of a eighty proof. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm used to smelling this kind of a nose on a much higher proof mezcal. Yeah, or on like a really high quality tequila from, you know, one of the legendary distillers. Right, right. Wow, this just comes right up to you. And it, it's, it, I can tell you from my experience, it's more of a traditional uh, Espadine nose, but it's very fruity. Um, I, and I with, with both of these so far, I haven't got gotten any of the strong alcohol notes that you'll sometimes get off of tequilas. Right. In case in point, last week when we were doing Tragos Amargos, we were still yeah. getting that alcohol at the very bottom. We're not getting any alcohol and these these I had to these were still sealed. 
until just now, a little while ago, and which is rare for me because I normally dive. Yeah, into them. you know, there was there was no need to let them oxidize or open up or anything. No. They're just ready to go. No, no, yeah, they're these. That's the other thing too. That they for some reason, I guess the mezcals and the way they're the they're produced, if they're artisanal or traditional or or you know in in, in whatever stills other than industrial. They're not as temperamental as tequila is. I'm I'm finding, you know, I don't have to. Other than you know, when they get to me, they're really hot. They're warm. You know what I mean? They're in a box. But one or two days at room temp, and you know, I don't need to. I, like you said, you don't need to open it up and let it bloom. It just it just it sings to you right away. Oh my gosh. Mm. On that's, a technical note, that's beautiful, man. <laughs> on a technical note, we've had a couple of dropouts on my end, so you might want to check that your camera's still on. Yeah, my camera's on, as far as I can tell. So, as far as yeah, we're good. We're, as you can see, we're at the mercy of Time Warner Cable. <laughs> <laughs> on both ends, unfortunately. Yeah, we're just we're just biding our time till you know Google Fiber shows up. Wow, I gotta I gotta dive in. This is beautiful. All right. This is beautiful. And there's no smoke, by the way. Okay. Now I'm getting a little bit more really minerally. Great finish. Especially on the back end. It explodes right in your in the mid, mid palette. It explodes. Yeah. The entry is smooth. Yeah. But on the Great. retro nasal, nice finish. Yeah, on the retro nasal, and 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 as you, if you do, you know, snap, uh, snap your 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 palate, you get ev everything, all herbs, um, spices, minerals. Mostly minerals is what I'm getting. Minerals and herb er herbaceousness. You know, and I want to say that I'm getting some smoke. Because I can, I can taste it now on my, on my palate. It's it's very minimal, and I'm not even sure if I can if if what I'm tasting is smoke. You know, unless I know how they're producing this. Like I say, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little confusing what they have on these cards, but artisanal. You know, and then and then steam cooked. If he's using an autoclave, then you know that explain the minimal if any smoke at all but i'm still getting something i'm getting something that's reminiscent of smoke you know yeah i you know maybe it's just because you know it's so big in its nose and flavor that uh oh, wow. you know well as we were saying at the beginning of the video even after i had rinsed i was still tasting it so you know I my palate could be blown out from the first one um might oh, be way to go. But, but, <laughs> well, you know, but then again, these are these are only at eighty proof, so you know they're not they're they're not as aggressive as what I'm used to having. You know, I'm used to having them at at above forty ABV. Yeah. You know, forty five. We've had some that came in at forty five. We had one uh, Montalobos is at forty one point something or other. Um, but these are these are eighty proof. And, but I got to tell you, this is beautiful. It this really is, is really something. Now I've had uh, what we consider what we we would call this a gateway mezcal, and probably one of the first gateway mezcals ever, um, because as as you recall, Del Maguey came in at a higher uh, alcohol by volumes, and um, uh, these folks are celebrating their twentieth anniversary this year. Scorpion mezcal, happy birthday to them, um, and. And I would say that they would probably be the first gateway mezcals, but this is this is really beautiful. It's yeah. it's much sweeter on the nose than than I've had in the past with other espadines, except for one, and that was at a higher ABV. That one is at forty five. Yeah, if, you know, and if I were to try to compare, you know, what I'm finding here to like a tequila production process. You know, I would say that, you know, it would be the kind of thing that would involve slow baking of the, uh, of the uh, agaves. Um, I would expect, you know, with this kind of 
profile, I would expect that uh, you know it would be a longer fermentation process, mm -hmm. so that you know the the yeasts have a chance to make more of the the varied compounds. If, and if then, he's if he's shredding, however he's shredding, he's you you know and fermenting, he's probably using a lot of fiber, because that's what it that's what it tastes like. It tastes like you're you're literally drinking the the plant itself. Yeah, but I'm not getting hit with, you know, like methanols and like wood alcohol or anything like that that you get with the, you know, the more fibrous stuff. Yep. Um, it says you know, here... So, and then like in, uh, if I were, you know, again, you know, using my experience in tequila, you know, I would say that um, you, uh, for fermentation, I would say that, you know, they're probably taking, you know, fairly generous cuts off heads and tails because you're not getting any of those off kind of chemical um, notes. Uh, yeah, not not ever not ever, not having seen any video or uh, of Doug French doing the, distil the distillation himself. I'm not sure how he does it. Um, you know, I've seen how other traditional or artisanal uh, master distillers are doing it, and and it's it's a there are, there are no instruments. Yeah, you know this is all by done by nose and and taste, uh, and 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 looks, you know, and 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 years of experience. So, um, I'm not sure how he's doing it, but whatever he's doing, he's doing it right. Yeah, I, I you know, the in, the information on the website says it's a dry bouquet, hints of lime, citrus, cucumber, salt. Which, which I would say maybe brine, you know, maybe briny. Yeah. Uh, and savory herbs. And it is herbaceous. I, I will yeah. say that. I will say that. Um, and the taste is dry to sweet. Again, lime, citrus. It says leather and dry smoke. So there is, there is, a, there is some smoke in there. I wouldn't say leathery because I, I personally I don't get leather until I start doing delving into repos and añejos myself, but they're calling it that, um, and and almost tannic is what it what it says here on the flavor notes. But I really like it. It's got it. You know what? It has a less heavy mouth feel than the than the blue agave version. Yeah. And, and I mean, did you I notice that? Say, yeah, and it leans more towards fruit than than herbs. Right, you know? right. Yeah, as you said, very succinctly, with the blue agave, is that it? It's it, it's it's like a Lowlands tequila, you know, with a lot of minerals. It's almost like, in fact, it, Lowlands, or I would say even tequila from Matitan, which has lots of minerals in it. Uh, but this is way way more refreshing, is what I'll say. Yeah, and really different. The mouthfeel is way different. It doesn't weigh heavy on your palate. It explodes on your palate. It's kind of more of what what I'm used to having, you know. Excuse me. And um, beautiful nose. This is again one of those where you you really don't need to do much with it. You know, just 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 be, just be with it. Wow. I got to say, again, Rick, brand of promise in the legacy category. Absolutely. They've been, they've been around 20 years. I would say do yourself a favor. You know, um, you, you've you seen the other mezcals out there, the more, you know, the, but this one here, they've been around as long, Scorpion Mezcal. And now they're called Scorpion because their full bottles do have a Scorpion in it. Yeah, it's glitchy. Ah, you might bring it yeah, up. see there it is. Yeah, Cuz you know, everybody knows that worms are for wimps, right? So <laughs> Are you seeing it at all? Yeah, we can see it. It's there. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's, you know, and and I'd rather have a, a a scorpion in it than a than a worm myself, but I'll tell you <laughs> what, with with or without, these are really really good. I I I'm so jazzed that we that we're finally getting getting them on sipping off the cuff after 20 years you know it took us that long to get these guys on so yeah. i'm i'm thoroughly enjoying this you know yeah. i'm sold. how do you like it so far how do you like mezcal so far <laughs> i'm loving it i'm loving it <laughs> oh my god we it's alive it's alive we created a monster <laughs> uh okay well 
Rick, that's our take on, on Scorpion Espadin. We'll be back a little bit later with uh, two more varietals. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. Rick Levy in San Diego. You've been watching Sipping Off the Cuff uh, on TequilaFishinado.com, also part of Tequila Aficionado Media. Please subscribe <laughs> and tell us what you like, because if you've had this longer than, than, than Rick and, and, and myself, tell us you know, what your favorites are. Give us some comments, but whatever you do, do what we tell you to do here at Tequila Aficionado. And tomar sabiamente.